For most broadcast engineers, fiber optics has meant a video feed to or from a remote site, such as the transmitter. But the role of fiber optics is expanding rapidly in the broadcast world. And to stay on top, broadcast engineers need to understand it and how to work with it. Fiber optics can be found in all forms of communications, including broadcasting, where its ability to carry very high speed data over great distances makes it superior to most other forms of data transport. The use of fiber optic adapters allows audio and video to be sent over great distances. This type of audio and video transport has been in use for some time in stadiums and other large area events such as golf. SMPTE has even produced standards for fiber optic camera interconnection such as SMPTE 311M and SMPTE 304M. Over the last several years, more and more audio and video are being converted into data for both storage and for transport. Many pieces of broadcast gear, from cameras to microwave radios, now come with GIGI network connections, where audio and video can be sent over IP networks. But the distances these high-speed data links can travel is short, about 300 feet. The higher the speed, the shorter the distance it can travel. That's where fiber optics come in. Today it's common to find network tie lines in office buildings and video facilities. Some even now are starting to install fiber optic tie lines as well. So what does a broadcast engineer need to know about fiber optics? That's exactly what this tutorial is all about. An optical fiber is a flexible, transparent fiber made of glass. That's an optical waveguide or light pipe. It contains the light entering at one end and transfers it to the other. Back in the 1840s, Swiss physicist Daniel Collodon and French physicist Jacques Babinet showed that light would follow the curves made by jets of water for fountain displays. Later, in 1854, John Tyndall popularized light guiding through demonstrations showing that light would follow the curves of a jet of water flowing from a tank. Both of these examples worked on the principle of total internal reflection, whereby the light traveling down a medium, such as a jet of water, is reflected back into itself at the border between the water and the air surrounding it. In 1961, glass was first drawn into very thin strands or fibers, small enough to be flexible and allow light to pass down their length. But with the attenuation in the order of 1000 dB per kilometer, it was unusable for communications. By refining the glass used to make the fiber optic cables, attenuation has, today, dropped down below 1 dB per kilometer for some cables. With the development and improvements in semiconductor diode lasers in the 1970s, it became practical to transmit light down a fiber optic over great distances. By the 1980s, fiber optic cables were crisscrossing the country and the oceans, delivering telephone calls and other data around the world. A fiber optic cable consists of three parts. First, there's the glass core or strand, which can be anywhere from 8.5 microns up to 100 microns in width. Second is the cladding, which is also made of glass. It totally surrounds the core and is a vital part of the light transmission. And third is the buffer that protects the cladding from the environment. To give you an idea of the core's size, one human hair is about 100 microns in width. 
A single fiber optic cable can be made in lengths anywhere from 3 feet to 3 miles long. These links can be spliced together to make runs hundreds of miles long. Light rays always travel in a straight line, even when they pass through a transparent glass, such as a window. So if a fiber optic cable were held in a straight line, light rays would pass through from one end to the other, just like a really, really thick piece of glass. But what happens when you bend the fiber optic cable? How does it make the light bend with it? Light traveling through a medium, such as a glass fiber, will be reflected at the border between the glass and whatever is surrounding it. That's where the cladding comes in. Cladding is a glass that surrounds the fiber optic core. The two have different refractive indexes. This is key to how fiber optics work. A refraction index describes how light will react as it passes through a transparent material. And the boundary between the materials with different refractive indexes is where the light will be reflected like the boundary between the fiber core and the cladding, or at the boundary between a jet of water and the air surrounding it. The amount of refraction is different for different wavelengths of light. It's the same principle that causes your straw to look like it's bent when it is in a glass of water. The refraction differences cause total internal reflection which keeps the light rays within the fiber optic core. Total internal reflection is the basis behind all fiber optics. The sharper the curve of a fiber optic cable, the more reflections occur as the light bounces from side to side within the fiber optic core. But if the angle is too great, say from a fiber optic cable that is bent too far, some or all of the light will escape into the buffer, attenuating the light signal. There are two basic types of optical fibers in use today, multimode and single mode. While some fiber optics are made from plastic, they are only used for very short runs. Multimode fiber optic cable is made from large strands of fiber, between 50 and 100 microns. This makes it much larger than the wavelength of the light passing through it. With a core this large, the light easily bounces or refracts within the core leading to different modes or paths of propagation, hence its name, multimode. These multiple modes or paths cause the light to travel different distances. Distance traveled equals time, so the light from different paths arrive at the receiver at different times. This distorts the light signal, causing sharp edges to spread out over the time it takes for all the light paths to converge at the receiver. This distortion is called modal dispersion and limits the distance over which multimode fiber can be used. Multimode fiber optic cable can either be stepped indexed or graded indexed. This refers to the way in which the light interacts with the fiber and the cladding. In stepped index multimode fiber optic cable, the difference between the refractive indexes of the cladding and the core occurs as a sharp change, or step, hence the name stepped index. The sharp step causes the light rays to reflect at the boundary uniformly. This consistent sharp transition leads to increased modal dispersion. It also leads to light loss, as some light rays are reflected at sharper angles and are absorbed into the buffer. 
because of the attenuation and increased modal dispersion. Stepped index multimode optical fiber is only used for short runs, such as within a room or a building. Graded indexed multimode fiber uses a different type of core or fiber optic strand. The core's refractive index gradually changes from the center outward. This graded index provides multiple boundaries for reflection. The light rays travel down the length of the optical core in a sinusoidal path, making it more coherent. This evens out the speed difference between the reflected light rays so that they arrive much closer in time at the receiver. Thus the distortion or modal dispersion is reduced, allowing graded indexed multimode fiber to be used over longer distances than the stepped indexed multimode fiber, but still much less than single mode fiber. Because of its core's diameter, multimode cable has a large surface area in which to interface with both receivers and transmitters. Thus, physical alignment is much easier. This large surface area also makes it easy to accept light in and emit light out, so lower light levels are needed. This makes it possible to use low-cost optical transmitters such as LEDs. Dirt is always an issue with fiber optics, but less so with the larger surface area found in multimode cable. What this all means is that equipment used with multimode fiber optics costs much less than that which is used for single mode fiber optics. The low cost of the equipment and the short runs between racks is the reason you will see multimode cable used almost exclusively in IT data centers. The single mode fiber optic cable has a single small strand of glass fiber at its core. It ranges in size from 8.5 to 10 microns, or about one tenth the size of a multimode core which is smaller than the wavelength of the light that propagates down it. Because of its small diameter, only a single ray of light can travel down its length, thus reducing modal dispersion considerably, but not entirely. But for practical purposes, there is only a single path or mode for the light, hence the name single mode fiber optic cable. Stepped index single mode fiber optic cable allows the one ray of light to bounce or reflect off the cladding interface when it encounters a curve in the fiber, thus allowing it to continue on to the end of the fiber. Because there is only one mode of propagation, all the light arrives at the end of the cable at the same time. Without the distortions caused by time differences between the different modes of propagation, single mode fiber optic cable can transport signals up to 50 times greater distance than multimode cable. This equals out to about 70 kilometers or over 43 miles. But because of the small diameter of single mode fiber, alignment is much more critical as the light must enter it straight on. Laser diodes are used as transmitters with single mode fiber optics for their spectral purity and high power output. Higher power is needed for the longer distances the single mode fiber can cover. Due to the higher cost of the equipment, single mode fiber optic cable is not as widely used within buildings or computer network environments as multimode. But with its superior ability to transport light over long distances, single mode fiber optic cable is used exclusively in long distance communications, such as cabling a city or between cities or even across oceans.
Fiber optic cable comes in a range of configurations. The simplest is just the fiber with its coating, while others need more protection and use a jacket, and they come in single and dual varieties. Then there are the multiple strand versions. Single and dual fiber optic cables with connectors at both ends are called patch cords. They are noted by the size of the fiber and the cladding. A typical single mode fiber would be 9 slash 125, where the fiber optic core is 9 microns and the cladding is 125 microns. A typical multi-mode fiber cable would be 62.5 slash 125, where the fiber core is 62.5 microns and the cladding is 125 microns. The actual cable consists of the fiber, cladding, coating, and jacket. There may also be filler fibers used between the fiber optic inner cable and the outer jacket. These fibers are used to strengthen the cable and take the stress off the fiber itself. Multiple fiber optic cables can have as many as a 288 or even more fibers within one cable. Some cables are rated only for indoor use while others can be used outdoors. There are tactical fiber optic cables that are designed for rough treatment such as at sporting events where it might be run over by vehicles or even twisted into knots. Armored fiber optic cable is encased within a metal sheath similar to flexible metal conduit with a plastic jacket surrounding it. The metal sheath will protect the fiber optic cable from almost any damage. Outdoor cables may be filled with gel or water absorbing powder to protect the fibers from water penetration which can damage them. And there are ribbon fiber optic cables that carry multiple fibers in a straight row. Multimode and single mode fibers are not compatible due to the sizes and therefore the modes of light travel. The light that travels down a single mode fiber is compact and focused. On the other hand, the light within a multimode fiber spreads out once it leaves the end of the fiber. This is why different transmitters and receivers are needed to handle the two types of fiber. To link the two together or to cross connect them, an electronic interface is usually required and that consists of receivers and transmitters for each type. The one exception is when single mode is transmitting the light and multi-mode cable is receiving it. A passive adapter can be used wherein the single mode fiber is misaligned or aimed off center to the much larger multi-mode fiber. This allows the light from the single mode fiber to quickly to begin to reflect off the cladding interface within the much larger multi-mode fiber creating multiple modes of light rays that traveled down the fiber.